Welcome to my presentation about our paper that we sent to the Postquantum Crypto Conference. The title is New Defeating New Hope with a Single Trace. Um, so many of you may know that New Hope is unfortunately no longer in the NIST competition for the standardization of post-quantum cryptography. And you may think, mm, okay, this is not so interesting anymore. But wait, there is, for example, Crystal Skyber in the third round as a finalist. And we are talking today about an attack that might be interesting for Crystal Skyber as well. So it's worth watching. I will start with a bit of context. Um, why we even looked to New Hope in detail and say how, how this whole project for work started. Then we made an FPGA implementation from New Hope. I will tell you something about the algorithm itself. And in the third part, I will tell you something about the attack that we found, which is the main contribution of the paper. So everything started when Securitasis, this is this company in Switzerland, you see it here, the logo, uh, they come to us at the Ost University and they told us um, we are producing HSMs or we, yeah, they sell them. And this is a system which have an FPGA inside and nowadays they use it for RSA or Diffie-Hellman uh, not post-quantum stuff in the asymmetric cryptography and now they want to go post-quantum. So what they need is for example a key exchange and of course it should not be better in performance than today so comparable to a kit curve with Hillman. So we said like oh, the performance about thousand operations per second um, with 10,000 lookup tables this is urea in the FPJ, this is something that Euclid curves uh, usually use and this should be reached with this new algorithm and of course it should be tested against sidechain attacks. So then there were many algorithms in the contest when we started the project and we just chose New Hope because because it is part of the standardization process and the performance seems well to us for the data that we have at this time. The key size and shift text size are reasonable and it looked to be fast, so we started with it. And now I will tell you something about the algorithm. I will not go into the details, but just, just the basic stuff. So in New Hope there is all about polynomials. Um, all the letters you see here stand for a polynomial with the given dimension, so it's 512-4024, depending on the instance. And in each dimension there is one integer with the modulo Q. Uh, Q is a prime number, it's 14 bit long, so it's a small prime number. And so the modulus goes is applied to all dimensions, all these integers. So all, one letter here represents just a polynomial all values between 0 and Q. Um, you see here, just under Alice, that we have capital letters and small letters. The capital letters stand for big polon polon polynomials and the small for small polynomials. So what's the difference? Well, the small one, um, all integer values on the dimensions are very close to 0. And in the big one, they are just random somewhere between zero and the modulus. Um, and now let's start with the, the algorithm, the, the key exchange, the admiral key exchange. Um, Alice generates three polynomials, a big one, A, a sm small one, S, and E and she calculates all, uh, a times s and adds this e which stands for error or it gives some noise and this results in b. Um, what I did not say yet is that the multiplication here, the normal polynomial multiplication, the dimension would double but here there is a special multiplication that the, the result has the same 
amount of dimensions. Um, it's speed up with something called NDT numeric theoretic transform, but I will not go into the details of this. So if Alice stores its S and says sends A and B to Bob, and Bob takes the message he wants to send, this is mu, and encodes it into a big polynomial V. Um, in addition, it takes the public polynomial A and makes a similar calculation as Alice did with some own private small polynomials, this is U. And Bob also calculates V prime. This is uh, the B times T plus another small error and the encoded message. Bob then sends U and V prime back to Alice. And Alice makes just this calculation here, V prime minus U times the secret key S. This results in V prime prime. And if you calculate what's, and if you look at which polynomials are inside here, you see that there is A times T times S twice, and one's positive, one's negative. So this cuts, this is away, and this is what results. And here you see that the only big polynomial is V. And if these small polynomials or multiplication of small polynomials are small enough, then it's possible to decode the message that Bob sends. So this message is the key for, for key exchange or a message if there's just message transmitted. Good. Now we took this algorithm and built an FPGA implementation of it which looks like this. So most of what I showed before is in this green part here, uh, the entity core. Um, what's special here compared to other implementations is that it's four times parallel. That means that here in the, in the RAM, we have always, in every clock cycle, we can read four uh, values or four dimensions and write four dimensions, and there is quite a long pipeline. I think it's about 20 stages within the allometric unit. So there is the operation itself plus the modular reduction. And this is about half of the resources go to this core here. And then we have the blue part. Um, this is shake. So shake is required. I did not tell everything before, uh, but for the public uh, polynomial A, there is not this is not sent between Alice and Bob, but it's just a seed, and this seed is expanded using shake, and then it's translated into a polynomial. And to do this, there is the need to have a shake instance or SHA3. And all these SHA3 uh, operations are calculated in the blue part, and the yellow on top. Um, is just to store the, the seeds or the chiffre text and find the message on Alice's side. This implementation is uh, using the Xilinx tools and the uh, Kintex 7 FPGA. Um, the core was quite small or medium small. It has 7,000 lookup tables and 7,000 flip-flops and under nine under 10 block RAM and DSPs each. So we're quite proud that the clock speed could be so high. It's, it's running with 420 megahertz. And this results in these delays. Um, the algorithm I showed in the beginning was the CPA. Um, I said there is two dimension possibilities. One is 512 and one is 1024. Um, the 512s correspond to a security of 128 bit and the other one to 256. And you see that Alice's key generation, the part that Bob does, and Alice's second part, the decryption, together is in both um, CPA and CCA. Uh, well, under 100 microseconds, this is quite fast. Uh, and even with the uh, bigger security, it's still under 0 0.2 milliseconds. This is 
faster than all that we found in the literature. Um, and our own performance goal that we have was always performed by a factor of 10. So what we reached, we have the FPGA implementation of a post-quantum key exchange, which is what securities wanted in the beginning. And the performance is actually even better than most Euclid curve Diffie-Hillman implementations for FPGA. So, but we have not talked about sidechain attacks less uh, yet. So what did you do? We measured power traces. Um, this is just the FPGA here. You see this is the main uh, VDD voltage and we have a small shunt so that we can see how much current goes into the FPGA. Then we build a board exactly for this purpose. Um, we have here the, the, the shunt resistors, uh, the FPGA is here, and then we have some uh, these are all power supplies here and so that we have really low noise on our traces and the trace looks something like this. Uh, this is a trace from A times S and you see it starts here then it goes a bit down and stops here and then you have this capacity uh, loading curve again or this RC curve. This is what the traces look and what we made for the attack is we said okay we make a golden trace, this is with the given S, or private key of Alice, and made 100,000 averages of this, this reference trace, and then we changed the S by a few bits, and tried or sweeped one whole byte, and then we looked if it's possible to, to say, okay, this one is this, uh, matches to the golden trace. We did this with all operations where S is inside. Uh, this is the entity, there is the multiplication with A and the addition with the error, because error would be interesting too to, as a target. Um, and the leakage was not so good. It was there, clearly, but it was only possible to match it if only this one byte was changed. If more was changed, Classification did not work with our correlation method. Um, it has something to do with the pipeline. There is like th this 20 pipeline stages that calculate something in parallel and it is just not possible when we change the whole S. Only only single bytes were. This was, this was something but not good enough for a practical attack. And we were searching for practical attacks. And then we did something that we did not found in any other publication at this time. So we said, hmm, there is not only the private key, but also the message is interesting for an attacker. And so we tried both the encode and decode functions to attack. And even in the first time we said, oh, there is very strong leakage during the encoding function. Um, and now the FPG implementation, I said before that it always calculates four values in parallel. And in during the encoding, we, it, there are always two bits per clock cycle that are processed. And so when we did the attack, we had the categorization and we clearly saw if both are zero or if both are one. But it was hard to determine between a zero one and a one zero. So, but, but still, even with this information, the, our FPGA implementation was attackable. So, we thought, okay, now we can attack our implementation. It might be interesting because it's the first, it would be the first uh, publication of an attack on message encoding. Um, but we thought it might be not so interesting for the community if we say we can attack our FPGA implementation. So we said, okay, let's see if it's also a problem in software. And then we took the reference C implementation at NIST and put it on a microcontroller and attacked the same there. So let me first start how the message encoding is implemented. Um, it's actually, the function is, is this part here. Um, there is just a loop over all message bits, so from zero to 255. And if the bit was one, then the dimension is half Q or zero if the message bit is a zero. 
It is not implemented that way because this is obviously uh, this will leak obviously. Um, what you can do is you can say, okay, we use a mask, and if the bit is one, then I use this mask as a I, I put it at all one, and otherwise it's zero, and then later use an and function. This is obviously still leakage, but it just shows you how this mask work, and the implementation is finally like this. There is this loop over all message bits, and then uh, this construction here um, makes a minus one if the corresponding bit is one or a zero, and a minus one in integer is exactly this mask, so an all one word, and the, the, the polynomial is then added to the dimension, the corresponding dimensions, and with this and, not like I did it here. So this is the code that we took and implemented on a board from new AI technology. This is uh, available, it's not so expensive, it's a few hundred dollars, I think. And I, we run the message encoding and we get this trace here. You may not see so much, but if you look a bit closer to it, and you know how long it takes for the individual bits to process, it's so obvious that here is leakage. Um, this is a one bit, this is a one bit, and here you have two zero, and if you have draw these lines here, every child can see the difference direct from the oscilloscope. So the attack is really easy, and in our opinion it's quite powerful because a single trace is enough to, to see this side channel, or to see, to, to read the, the message. Okay, this was my, our main point, and now this was all about New Hope, but let's come to Kyber. Um, you see on the left side the code, the reference code from New Hope, as it was uh, before, and on the right side the Kyber, and let me focus you to two lines, and you see the construct here is almost identical. The only difference is that the modulo Q is different and Kyber runs up, but it might be obvious that if an attack works on the New Hope code, it also works on Kyber. And there are already two prints in the ERCR uh, reports that say, yes, the attack works there as well. Okay, now we have the attack, and what can we do about it? Well. In the FPGA implementation, there are many possibilities. One can calculate the inverse operation in parallel. So that means for ever we can double the, the whole the whole core and calculate with the inverse message or only part of it. Um, what can be done in both microcontroller in and processes, one can randomize the processing order so that the message is knit from bit 0 to 255, but that one makes a list first, and then we start with bit 112, then bit 5, then bit 200, and so on, so that an attacker sees if, he will still see if it's a 1 or a 0, uh, but he doesn't know in which order. Uh, masking is another um, thing that could be done, but one has to be careful because with masking, um, this is not sufficient as only masking because it is a single trace attack and then one has to attack two message encodings instead of one and then we still know the message. So to conclude, uh, we reached all the goals that our uh, industry partner wanted. We have this FPGA implementation. The performance is still good. We searched some attacks. We even found a new attack. And we have some countermeasures implemented. And by doing so, we more or less accidentally found this attack on the message encoding for software. And you see the attack is powerful and it may be a point for the next step in round three because Kyber is prone as well. Okay, thank you for listening or for watching the video. This was 
my presentation and goodbye.